Dear Chairman, Dear audience members, thank you for attending this conference. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my views of system on chip design. Let me give a short background of my experience in the topic. I started my career in microelectronics in the beginning of 1970s. Then I was a part of the design team at the semiconductor company in Silicon Valley, the American Microsystems, the well-known AMS in Santa Clara. There I was leading a design team, joint development team composed from designers from AMS and from designers from Slovenia, members of the Laboratory for Microelectronics, Faculty of Electrical Engineering in Ljubljana, LMFE. There, I had an opportunity to be a part of the exciting development of a new era of electronics called microelectronics. After introduction, I will start with digital system on chip design examples. After that, I will address the analog CMOS circuit design. Next step towards the system on chip methodology is the introduction of mixed signal system design. After that, I will present a mixed signal design example of a sophisticated ultra-sensitive artificial nose system. I will continue with a magnetic microsystem design example and I will conclude with standard remarks. The digital system on chip st started in the 70s. The most wanted system on chip was a microcomputer based on single chip microprocessor and the peripheral chip like clock generator, RAM, RAM access memory, ROM, read-only memory, PIA, peripheral interface adapter, and ASIA, asynchronous communication interface adapter, and so on. The simplified schematic of this is shown here. This was a complete microcomputer, but when packed in a commercially available device, it was large and expensive. The intermediate solution was a system on chip. As it can be seen, the required chipset was put into a hybrid package using a thin layer of gold-plated interconnection traces, and the interconnections were bonded with gold wire about 33 micrometer diameter. As expected, this tiny system in package was a very good replacement of a bulky system fabricated on PCB and was well accepted. The size of this package is only 25 millimeters square and its cost was only a fraction of the discrete counterpart. This system was designed and fabricated at LMFE. A big step forward was the design of system on chip combining the complete function of the microcomputer on a single chip. We have joined to this effort. In Santa Clara, in Silicon Valley, a joint development team has been established of the designers from LMFE and from AMS. I was there the team leader. In a short design time, around 12 months, the microcomputer S2000 has been developed. Many professional and computer applications use it successfully. The result of this effort was a microcomputer made in MOS technology. The device was about 5 times 5 mm and it comprised all necessary microcomputer components. The circuit contained about 30,000 transistors, 
has a good yield for that time. Our 30,000 transistor had to be layouted manually, one by one. The commercial success of S2000 was a valuable return to design cost. This is a photograph of the S2000 chip wafer. The wafer contains also two process control monitors where different structures required during the fabrication process to control and monitor the process parameters both by microscopic observation, by the electrical measurements and other methods. In later periods of time, the PCM structures were moved to the device area or in the scribe line. This allowed better control on the full wafer area. In mid-70s, we see a new discipline in the microelectronic design. Smart engineer realized that MOS mostly CMOS technology, offers a number of analog components besides the MOS transistors. These include passive components like resistors made of a polysilicon. The layout of polycon resistor is shown on top left. The cross section of it is shown below and the equivalent circuit in the bottom. The yellow color in the layout is the polysilicon layer and the red color is the metal uh, layer. An important issue is the parasitic capacitance of the resistor bottom layer to the substrate. The metal connections can influence the resistor properties by its parasitic inductance, as shown in the equivalent circuit, at high frequency, and its parasitic resistance is degrading also the accuracy of the resistor. Also, the metal to polysilicon contact does have a significant effect on resistor accuracy. There are also different types of analog resistors. The diffusion type resistor, shown on the right, to the uh, poly resistor, which can have much larger resistor values per square, but suffered for being connected to the substrate with a diode polarized in the reverse direction. This diode has a significant nonlinear parasitic capacitance of its junction to the substrate. <coughs> this diode can play an important negative role to the resistor behavior at higher temperature due to the temperature dependence of the reverse diode current. This current, usually negligent at 25 degrees, will increase about 1000 times at 100 degrees C. Integrated capacitor structure, shown in the middle, is a simple structure of a pair of conductive plates separated by thin layer of dielectric insulator. The most common capacitor, which is shown, is the polysilicon layer to polysilicon layer separated by a thin high purity oxide layer, allowing a capacitance around 1 femtofarad per square micrometer. But this requires 22 times 22 micrometer area for just one picofarad capacitor value. For analog designer, the integrated capacitor and integrated polysilicon resistors are the most expensive components in terms of the silicon area in the chip. In early CMOS technology, the bipolar transistors were also available. The topologies of both vertical and lateral structures are shown on the right side.
The analog design in the 70s introduced new challenges to design engineers. It turned out that it is much more complicated than the digital one. In the last decade of the previous century, the know-how of digital circuit design has been introduced into graduate and postgraduate curriculum at most advanced university, and the students got hands-on various digital design tools, and most of the less experienced students and engineers were able to create a successful digital designs fabricated by so-called multi-project wafer service offered by several silicon foundry for a reasonable cost. A much more complex tax task is to design an analog integrated circuit. To get an idea of the complexity of the ta task, let's consider some problems of selected analog circuit elements like transistor pair matching, resistor matching, and capacitor matching. This is transistor pair layout example. Each transistor is split into two equal transistors located diagonally across the center. This type of layout is called centroid symmetrical design. In addition, on top and bottom, two dummy transistors are placed to prevent any influence from the neighboring structure. The crosstalk from the substrate is minimized with the guard bar ring around the transistor pair. Such layout can reduce the transistor pair offset voltage below 1 millivolt with a reasonable yield. Here, the resistor matching layout issues are demonstrated. Figure A shows a meander layout of two equal resistors. The, the layout guarantees an equal number of resistor squares for both resistors and also an equal number of corners. In addition, a dummy resistor ring guarantees the same influence of the neighboring structure. There is also a guard bar ring to prevent the substrate crosstalk. Similar precautions were taken in the resistor divided divider shown in figure B. But the solution in these examples suffers from the way of contact, contacting the resistor, allowing the current resistor being dependent of the metal to poly contact which is very variable and degrades the resistor accuracy and matching considerably. This problem is solved in figure C, where the contact is outside the resistor current path. The integrated capacitor matching accuracy is important in various analog circuits among them the switch capacitor filters and A to D and D to A converter with resolution around 10 to 12 bits. For best results, the concept of unity value capacitor was adopted. In the figure we see four unity capacitors connected in parallel on the top uh, layer. Taking care of strict layout principle and discipline is important. Using, wherever possible, only an array of unity capacitor, and this helps a lot. Introduction of non-unity value capacitor can be very tricky. As we were present in Silicon Valley during the pioneering time, of microelectronics development, I was able to design an industry-first integrated telephone ASIC, which is shown here. 
this ASIC allowed to design a very nice and small telephone set. The, the license of this ASIC was used in three different countries, Slovenia, USA and Japan. Important step forward towards system on chip was the introduction of mixed signal design methodology. Mixed signal means the combination of digital and analog circuit on the same chip. Analog portion of the chip usually deals with small signals vulnerable to the large signal digital crosstalk. We were authoring the first technical book presenting this novel technology. In his introductory statement in the book, the distinguished professor Carver Mead wrote, the text is com comprehensive and liberally illustrated. It covers CMOS technology, design, CAD, and testing design management, foundry interface, and cost issues. It is a useful contribution to the subject at the present time when a practical implementation scheme is needed for a wide variety of mixed signal design application. It was signed by Carver Mead, Professor of Computer Science, California Institute of Technology. His book, Presenting the mixed signal design theory was accepted well among young designers, helping them for easier pick up the art of mixed signal design. Also, IEEE has published a video cassette with mixed signal design theory lecture I was giving at Stanford University. The mixed signal design was and is still the most promising ASIC design discipline, allowing system on chip for measuring applications comprising digital and signal processing, analog signal processing, different integrated sensors, and even some actuators. One of the very important issue is the mixed signal design switching. In the mixed signal design is switching noise. The digital part of the ASIC is synchronous with the system clock, which means that a large number of the digital transistors switch at the same time, producing large current spikes at the clock transitions. This current spike produces large voltage drops on the supply line of the ASIC. The current spike can be as large as few amperes for larger SIP chip. Considering the supply trace resistance of about 30 milliohms per square, the one millimeter length brings about 100 squares, which means 3 ohms. At 1 amp, this would cause a 3 volt voltage drop. Such voltage drop destroys the digital operation of the ASIC. But not only that, a large number of transistors would couple this voltage drop to the substrate and consequently destroy also analog functionality of the ASIC. Therefore, the switching noise mitigation uses distributed clock as shown in the screen. The clock drivers introduce the delay, therefore the current spikes on the supply lines are separated accordingly. The same result is achieved using a reverse clock shift register.
the figure shows simulation result using distributed clock. In actual well-designed digital ASIC, the current spikes are reduced more than 100 times. The introduction of shadowed registers allowed the usage of the digital design tools. This is FS, this timing diagram based on large skewing, large clock skewing, and shadow resistor storage. Industry standard synthesis tools take full control over the clock tree structure, allowing very limited or even none designer imposed decision on the time spreading of clock edges. One way around this implementation problem is the application of shadow registers, which allow extremely large clock skewing while maintaining fully synchronous operation uh, supported by EDA tools. Supply current spike of a reference circuit shown in red and after two different optimization with the introduction of shadow resistor is shown here. Now I switch to the ultra-sensitive web portrait detector system design example. Vapor press, vapor Vapor trace de detection is potentially powerful method to detect the presence of the toxins, explosives, and other materials that evaporate. It is based on the fact that most materials emit a rather small but detectable number of different molecules. The applications are in the environmental, uh, food industry, security, military, medicine, and so on. The principle of operation is shows here. The capacitor pair on the left is composed with a modified capacitors on the left and unmodified capacitors close to it. Capacitor pair on the right shows the presence of target molecules, the modified capacitor catches them and consequently changes the capacitance. One half of the differential MEMS cap is modified with self-assembly monolayer. Different modifications are used for different layers. Where when target molecule absorbed to the surface of, surface of the modified capacitor, its capacitor change and the difference to unmodified capacitor is about 0.2 picofarad. The sensing sensitivity is better than 0.05 attofarad per square root hertz. And this corresponds to much less than one year layer of adsorbed molecules. The difference of capacitance is extremely small, but it can be measured with extremely sensitive electronics. This is a photomicrograph photo of different sections of differential capacitor. This sensor is designed and fabricated in LMFE. As you can see, it is a comp structure of the capacitors. This is the model of the sensor capacitor, which is used in the high level model of the system. This is block diagram of the system showing two differently modified sensors 
red and yellow to improve the selectivity of the system. This shows the realization of the complete system. It consists of a system in package, as you can see, as the current technology does not yet allow capacitor functionalization on the AC. However, the system dramatically reduces the state of the art of system used at the airport. For design of this complex system, a top-down a top-down design approach was used with high level of modeling of each building block. The simulation results of model system is shown in the figure for four different concentration of the capacitance change. Now I move to a complex magnetic microsystem, which is a good design, an example of system on chip. This, this screen shows the principle of operation. An array of magnetic sensors positioned in the circle sends the magnetic field produced by permanent magnet of silicon sh cylindrical shape magnetized as shown. It is placed in the center of the circular array of sensors and is rotating around the axis of the sensor. The sensor sends only the normal component of the magnetic field. In this project, the integrated whole element is used for sensing the normal component of the magnetic field. The whole element sensing circuit is modified with locally generated reference magnetic field produced by a tiny microcoil placed around the whole element, which is, has a dimension of about 20 micrometers times 20 micrometers. The reference field is generated with a reference current via two additional terminals. This structure is known as six terminal hall element, and we hold the patent for this invention. The actual system of chip is shown here. It performs all functions of sensor signal processing. The sensors are positioned in the circle in the center of the ASIC. The sensor pairs position composite the center always see the opposite magnetic field direction and the same amplitude. To optimize the resulting offset voltage, the sensor pair output is subtracted, meaning giving the double signal and zero voltage of any systematic offset voltage, and the signal to random offset voltage ratio is improved by square root of 2. When adding, the sensor signal located in half circle, the output has a sinusoidal shape with the period of the magnet rotation. When adding one other half circle sensors, this time phase shifted for 90 degrees, the output has a cosine shape. From sine and cosine function, a very accurate phase can be extracted using both analog and digital signal processing. In the presented silicon system, both types of the signal processing are present, and the resulting output provides angle accuracy to a few angular minutes. This system on chip was copied by a number of silicon foundry, and it was a replacement of optical system being much more expensive and more vulnerable to the environmental condition. The resulting 
system on chip is produced in quantity of tens of millions worldwide. But the Slovenian company producing the rotor and linear product used in robotic is still holding the status of being number one in the world. The presented microsystem consists of 64 magnetic sensors located in the circle with the diameter of 5 mm. The location of the sensors is marked with black color, so you can see this circle which is in the center of the chip. This shows the detail of two adjacent sensors. The bias current of the sensors flow is oriented in 45 degrees to the wafer crystal orientation. This helps to reduce the systematic offset voltage of the whole element. In addition, a further adjacent sensor bias current is rotated now for 135 degree to wafer crystal orientation for even better total offset voltage minimization. To conclude, this was a short and incomplete overview of our involvement in the system and chip technology development. However, this technology is nowadays still in lively development. A very promising technology is called wafer post-processing of the finished wafers containing mixed signal ASIC at the specialized founding with specific novel technologies providing additional function not available in original silicon foundry. Such example is post-processing to add the emergent magnetic sensor, TMR, tunnel magnetoresistive sensor, which has much better properties than the current uh, or existing ones, including higher sensitivity, lower offset voltage, and so on. In many cases, including this justifies the mm, more expensive cost uh, compared to existing solution. Another is combination of electronic signal with optical signal processing. And this is a challenge for future system on chip. And there is much, much more to come. To acknowledgement, Slovenian research agency, AR, RS partly contributed funding the research work presented. My thanks go to my LMFE, LMFE team for their contribution to presented project, among them to Professor Drago Sele and Dr. Dusan Radic. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>